Welcome to Through the Funnel. I am your host, Mallory, and I am so excited to be joined by my colleague and friend, Travis. Travis and I are going to be talking about Chinese medicine, facial reading, and how that is related to channel systems, acupuncture channel systems, meridians that are found within your body. Travis, thank you so much for joining me here today. Oh yeah, thanks for having me. You are welcome. For anybody who is interested in Chinese medicine facial reading and seeing Travis, just want to mention that he is in the Santa Monica area, and we are going to leave his email address in the show notes so you can go to my website to get that information. Travis, so it is my understanding from class and from talking with you that we have lines on our face and those lines tell a story about the life that we have lived. We have talked about the basics of Chinese medicine facial reading in another episode, which everybody needs to go back and listen to because it's amazing. This information um, is very informative. But these specific lines that we're going to talk about today have to do with our conception vessels and the vessels that guide us through the world. And they're seen on the face as being horizontal, so those that go across, as well as vertical lines on the face. So Travis, let's start maybe from top. So the forehead to bottom, can you tell us a little bit about those horizontal lines? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, let me go backwards a little bit first, because one of the things I'll tell you, um, every line means something. And I think the Chinese did such a good job of tracking this. And it's so interesting to me because I think I might have said this in the last episode, but we study nonverbal communication communication, we study body language, but for some reason, we don't study the most expressive part of the face, which is or sorry, the most expressive part of the body, which is the face. And Western medicine uses this too. So the Chinese, it's not as mysterious or esoteric as it sounds. It's actually quite practical. And basically they observed over a long period of time that when you made certain facial expressions, it was related to certain emotions or to certain life experiences. So one of the things that I'll tell you, any vertical or diagonal line when they go like this or diagonal like that, it is a emotional line. It's some kind of emotion that you either over expressed or you repress. And it, it, it's only, I don't even want to call it problematic, but it's only um, chronic if it's there at rest. They show up when you're expressing, but that's pretty normal. And if it's a horizontal line, that's more of a life experience line. You're living your life in a way that might be altering optimal health and nothing's good or bad. And that's actually really one of the things I really loved about learning from my teacher Lillian was that she really took out all the judgment and all the criticism because everything has a yin and a yang. And the whole goal is to get past yin and yang and see things for what they are. So sure, some traits might be considered good. Others might be considered, you know, not so good, but ultimately it's how you use it. It doesn't really matter what shows up. So if you have any of these lines, don't worry about it. But the reason the midline of the face is so important is because that's where the conception vessel and the governing vessel meet, the run of the do. And that's called the river of life. So the way I was taught it is this. In this lifetime, we have this river and it's the flow of our life. We have this jing, this physicality or this potential that we're supposed to use to become the person that we're supposed to be, our Ming, our destiny, the mandate from heaven, as the Chinese very poetically put it. And everyone has enough physical strength or Jing to be this person in the world. So when these lines show up on the middle of your face, it's actually showing you're living in a way that's kind of detouring you from authenticity. So do you want me to start on the vertical ones or the horizontal ones? <laughs> I mean, what a necessary pause around that statement. And that's really, I think what Chinese medicine does to us is just gives us a pause. But yes, I do want you to start, you know, wherever your brain is going to go. But before you do, I just kind of want to make an interesting comment. So gua sha, facial gua sha is so popular right now. And so people are trying to move and smooth, as well as cosmetic acupuncture, those lines. And something that comes from that too is oftentimes 
having to move through or confront that emotion as you start to change the structure of your face and the way those lines or wrinkles um, sit on your face. Would you say that that would be true? I mean, in my experience, it it seems to be, yes. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, one of the things I find is wrinkles are not permanent unless you want them to be. And, uh, you know, a lot of people do want them to be permanent. It's not a bad thing, but it's just sometimes some things are so deeply ingrained and they become part of our constitution, whether it's a certain emotion, whether it's a certain pattern of behavior, whether it's just a certain way of being. And the thing is, is that the way I was taught it is that if you let go of the pain of the experience, or if you work with the emotion, the wrinkle pops off. And I've seen it so many times. And I'm starting to actually now take pictures because I've been teaching classes. That's been the hardest part is to find the pictures of before and after. And even I had a woman who had these really deep lines on her forehead that were related to like a divorce that she went to and went through in her twenties. And she went through a lot of therapy. We were talked a lot about them. And she went back to go get Botox like a year later. And the injector goes, have you been going to see someone else? And she goes, no, what do you mean? She's like, these lines really aren't there anymore. They're not that deep. And she goes, oh, no, I've just done a lot of therapy. <laughs> so she just did a lot of the interpersonal work. So it's hard. You know, if you get the 11s, like, you know, that show up right here, that's like anger, irritation, frustration, impatience, annoyance. There's a lot of things that can show up right there. So if you work on that, you express it in the moment and then you don't hold on to it then it's actually a lot easier to work with that. But yeah, the gua sha, absolutely. It's like, I think the way I was taught it is that the face, just like the feet and the hands, it's a microsystem and the ears. Mm -hmm. So it's all these little points. And every time you're working on that, like you're actually unearthing that like superficial layer of whatever's there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And helping the muscles to relax. You know, you talked about the 11s and the muscles, um, the abicular muscles, you know, pull it, those in. And so when you relax this particular part of your face, you're also going to be relaxing your pelvis, which has to do with fight flight and how we respond to our external environments, but I don't want to get too detoured. So um, I didn't know that though. That's very interesting. So when you relax this area, the pelvis relax, oh, yeah. it is that microsystem that you were talking about. And if you were to lay the pelvis on top of the face, you would find that the hinges of the pelvis connect with the hinges of the jaw. So when people have jaw pain, they often have uh, tight hips, pelvic pain, uh, trouble with menstruation, um, you know, and then classically like the TMJ. So, but I don't want to get too far into, sure. I mean, we can <laughs> just divert all over the place. Um, so going back to these horizontal and vertical lines, you were talking about those that are horizontal and then those that kind of slightly go off. And I think you were going to start with the horizontal lines as you were telling us about that patient who had deep lines and decided to work with a the therapist and inevitably ended up smoothing them out. I have to backtrack a little bit. Um, so basically there is a map and it's called the map of life experiences because each part of the face, each part of the face can show so much information in such a little space. You know, there's this age map because just like rings of a tree, this is just from Lillian, just like rings of a tree, when if you look at the rings of the tree, you can see what years the tree had fire, what years it got good water and sunshine, what years like, you know, it, a bird pecked at it. The rings will alter based off the stresses of the tree. And she would always say that people aren't very different. You know, we really embody and emulate nature in so many different ways. So what happens is, is that we have this thing called the map of life experiences. And it basically shows that, that when something str stressful or traumatic in a person's life occurs, the face marks a very specific place because the Jing has been frozen from the fear of the reaction to the event or experience. So good or bad stress can have, it can mark. It, you, you don't really know what happened. You don't know, you don't know like really like, you know, what the event was, but you can see that something big did happen if there's a marking there. So just like I said, horizontal lines are life experience lines. Something happened in your life at that time. And the vertical diagonal lines are more emotional. But, you know, you can still have emotional side effects from stressful events in your life. And those emotional side effects get lodged in the body and they can create dis-ease in, in the organs. They can create this disharmony. So these 
life experience markings are primarily horizontal. And when you know how to read these markings, it's really easy to help track the patterns in a person's life and help propel them towards their destiny, towards their authentic way of being, because that's the whole goal of, of face reading and facial diagnosis. And one of the things I might not have made clear, face reading is all over the Neijing. It's just, it got kind of lost, but you know, when it's used in health, it's called facial diagnosis. When it's used for any other aspect, it is called face reading. And mm -hmm. they're the same thing. So it's just like, if you're focusing on the health, of course, it's facial diagnosis, you know, the darkness under the eyes, that's the kidneys and the upper lip, that's the stomach and so on and so forth. But if you are looking for the patterns of someone's life, I still think that very much does affect health because a lot of the times what happens is, is the biggest thing that blocks the spirit from coming through is trauma, is stress. And what happens is, is that that can actually really create chronic illness if you haven't dealt with it. And underneath almost every disease is emotional underlay. There's something related there. You know, with cancer, there's a big um, correlation of other directedness. Other people's needs become more important than your own. With heart disease, there's loneliness and hurry and hostility. You know, with um, with like COPD, there's a lot of grief involved, things like that. So it's like, there's always something underneath there. So when you can actually track these markings, these horizontal lines, it's not a bad thing if you have them, but just something big happened at that time in your life. And it's funny, when I, when I learned this, I kind of didn't believe it. I thought it was a little bit, you know, too esoteric. I thought it was a little too mystical. And I have to tell you, it's I've seen it so many times now that it's just so, so accurate. And I always can track that. So when people get these horizontal lines on the forehead, because I think that's what you're asking about, the ears are early childhood, infancy, um, up to like 13. The hairline is the teenage years. Then the forehead's the 20s. The eyes and the eyebrows are the 30s. The nose and the cheekbones are the 40s. 50s in the philtrum, 60s in the mouth. And then, you know, you go on and so forth. 70s, 80s in the jaw and chin. So, you know, when you're looking at these things, when people have those, those really deep lines in the forehead, they're kind of what Lillian would call the, oh my goodness lines, your eyebrows raise and you're looking and you're like, life is not what I thought it was going to be. And there's whole <laughs> time, to occur, right? Yeah. It's like, you know, it's like, oh, practical. Happened. Yeah. And it's just like, the, cause that's how you get those lines, right? You, you really raise your eyebrows and you say, what just happened? Mm. so the way I was taught it is this okay and you know for a long time Lillian said I didn't think that these lines could go away but actually she realized that they could and I, I've seen it she was the one that actually like showed me that that, that could happen and then I had clients like like I said with the, the woman that got Botox she did a lot of therapy because she had a marking right from her divorce mm. when you're looking at this map of life experiences it's showing the decades of life and we don't get taught this in the west but it's so important because basically it's shown you go from yin to yang to yin to yang. You go through the mountains and the rivers and the mountains and the rivers. And that's a whole different conversation. But the forehead is the 20s. It's a very young time. You go out in the world and you try new things and you figure things out and you try to figure out what works and what doesn't. The 30s, you're supposed to be a little bit more established. You know, not always, but you know, you're, you're supposed to be. You're supposed to be a little bit more yin. You kind of learn what works and what doesn't. You don't really have that wild desire to you know, date recklessly, go party. Maybe you do, maybe you listen don't. Listen to techno music. Yeah, listen to techno music. <laughs> Hopefully you've done a lot of your schooling and all the things that are really hard and very young. Your 30s, you're supposed to be a little bit more yin. And then the 40s, that's actually like the last true decade of youth. It doesn't mean you're old after at 50, but like that's the last true decade you have to be very young and still go like do things, maybe not the way you did it in your 20s, but at the same time, time it's going to be very different than the way you do it in your 60s and the years before and after decade birthdays are what's called critical transitions they're the times you go from yin to yang they're the times you change your ways of being and these horizontal lines that do show up in the foreheads of the 20s well, or they could show up anywhere um they're actually showing when you're moving into that critical transition that there's old ways of being that you have that do not work anymore you can't get away with being late all the time and smile and say, oh, I'm sorry. You can't, you can't really do the little white lies that you might've done. You can't, you, you just can't do a lot of the things that you, that you used to be able to get away with because that's called maturity. So when you stop doing those things and you stop thinking that like life is really bad and that life's, life's hard and you start accepting the way that things are and you realize that you have a responsibility as a human being to grow and to evolve, 
then all of a sudden life gets much easier. So it's like the way I was taught it is that when you have a lot of hardship in your life, things always have to go to the opposite. It will get easier if you let it and if you learn the lessons. So when things are not working, it's because you're trying to, you're being too willful. Stop trying to go the way that life is resisting. And I felt this so hard when I was trying to sell solar. It's like, I knew that like I wanted to make more money so I could go pay for my education and pay off my student loans. And I created this false narrative in my head that I couldn't make money doing what I'm doing now because, you know, it feels weird to be teaching face reading and, and doing Chinese medicine and, and, you know, all these different things, but I'm doing it. And, you know, I, I'm actually making, you know, as much money as I was selling things. And I was so miserable at that time. So when you get these lines in the forehead, they're basically, the deeper they are, the way I was taught it is that you're holding on to the pain of the experience still. And then when you let go of the pain, the line lessens. It's that simple. If the lines are broken, this is where it gets a little interesting, okay? When the lines are broken, it means you haven't fully learned the lesson. Mm -hmm. If the lines are connected, it means that you have. You've learned whatever it is. You might still hold on to the pain, but you've learned the lesson. And if the lines cross the midline of the face, which is the river of life, very important, that's a very, very important lesson in your lifetime. Mm -hmm. I think I have all three of those, or I did at one point. And I would say that that is true in its simplicity. The more one is able to ease into the circumstances and situations that they have been a part of, the entire body softens. And as a result, we are able to hold on to our yin, vital fluids, resources, food. And I remember, and not currently, um, it's interesting because I did do a little bit of an experiment. So I would do cosmetic acupuncture on the line at the chin. <clears throat> and I a really powerful point too. Did, did things come up when you put it in there? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, Ren 24 and then conception vessel 24 has to do with, you know, how we take in information and take in food because it's directly below the mouth and so many other things, but then the foreheads on the lines, um, I didn't, I wasn't going to do any cosmetic acupuncture too. And of course I would, you know, gua sha them, but I noticed that the skin on my forehead was very dry and it had a difficult time holding on to moisture. So things like, uh, facial moisture, sunscreen, you know, oils, anything that we put on the skin to help rehydrate. Once I was really able to feel a significant change in my diet and the foods that I ate, because I grew up in a metal type where I had a lot of food sensitivities that resulted in skin issues. So rashes, eczema, all over my body, various different degrees at different times in my life. And once I started a multifaceted process for uncovering some of these deep layers, because these lines in the forehead, like Travis mentioned, they happen in our early twenties, uh, mid twenties. Once I started to go through and process some of the emotions that I thought were attached to that and experiences, they really began to soften and my body started to maintain the moisture in that area as well, which tells me that from resources that we take in, I was able to start banking my yin. So I was no longer in a yin deficient state, which is when we see a lot of dryness is part of one of the extremes, but uh, my body not only filled the deficiency, but it had enough to replenish the largest organ, which is the skin. And a lot of my eczema has since subsided. And, you know, I, I didn't take any pharmaceuticals and only did it with food and herbs, um, you know, lifestyle choices, and then a lot of um, emotional processing too. So 
Well, there you go. Good little case. <laughs> that's really well said. And like, wow, that's so cool that you were able to heal that. You know, I'm not Chinese, obviously, but I, I was taught from a Chinese woman who learned from her own Chinese lineage. So I just, I learned from her, but she would always tell me that the hardest things in your life, they're actually setting you up because eventually you are supposed to go out and help other people who have been through what you've been through. And I remember thinking, I was like, oh God, I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I was like, I don't want to have to go through it. And she's like, well, that's just kind of how it goes, but you'll see. You don't have to. Well, right? that's kind of actually how you heal from it, you know, like yeah, in, yeah. in a way where it's like the thing, the hardest things you've been through end up helping other people. And then you, you see later on why you had to go through those things. And it actually like creates this profound experience. And when you watch other people go through what you've been through, all of a sudden you recognize a lot of your own lessons. You see how you could have done things and then you let go of the pain because you realize it's a natural process of life and because the chinese were so big on destiny they actually didn't really care too much about health they just cared that you your jing this fundamental constitutional strength and potential of the body could connect with your spirit to go be this person in the world that lived out this kind of societal obligation to go be the best you you can be in the world that's all destiny is lillian would say the purpose of life is to be you in the world and that's very hard to do Mm -hmm. So when you get Jing blockages, what, which what is what these lines are showing, they're what distort people from their path. They're what distort people from living their most authentic selves and living in a way that is truly who they are. So until they can really truly learn why and how they are blocked, they won't be able to do that Taoist alchemy, which is basically turn the lead into gold, reverse the pattern, take that really burdensome, heavy, lead-filled experience and use it to empower you. And until you do that, you can't fulfill your destiny. You can't live out your path. You can't be the person that you're supposed to be because you're still holding on the baggage. Mm -hmm. So these lines are really just saying that you have old pains and old triggers that you haven't really let go of. And of course, we're going to have some, of course, every, I don't know a person that really can't get out of those. But the funny thing is, is that Lillian, when she died at 65, I think, she had less lines on her forehead than when she was like in her 50s and even in her 40s. And it was because she let go of the pain and she worked through so much stuff. And I was really shocked because I saw an old interview of her where she had like really deep lines on the forehead. And she talked about them all the time, but she let go of the pain. And then she ended up helping people navigate death and grief and divorce and all these different things because she had so much experience with it. So if you have these lines again, don't worry, you know, but you might just need to look and say like, what happened to me in my twenties? Like, you know, what happened to me that really caused me to look at the world differently and did it prevent me from being more authentic? And you might say no, you know, but then you might think about it and you might realize you still have those old ways of being that aren't necessarily so useful in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And everybody's process for unraveling is going to be different some ways it'll be the same and just make it your own go through it however you um, feel is best for you and you said it and I just I'm acknowledging it but how grateful I am for my patients you know because it is a two-way street and I'll tell some of them that you know when you say thank you I say thank you back because even though you're coming into my space and I'm providing a service that has to do with health and healing, on the physical, the mental, the emotional, the spiritual level. I am blessed with being able to watch you go through that and to transition and move through it. And just like what you're saying, tell patients, I've had that experience too. I understand where you're coming from because I've been there and being able to relate to them I'm realizing because you said it is a big part of what has helped me to transition um, through these lines that I knew could be changed, you know, really just from class with you and Lillian. And um, so, yeah, it's thank you for saying that because it goes both ways. And I think that's true with a lot of situations, especially when we find ourselves doing work that we really enjoy. Yeah, absolutely. And I will just say, it's just when, when you're going through something hard and people are giving you advice and they haven't been through it, it's, you can't really receive it too well. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, like you get that they have compassion, you get where they're coming from. And it, it's not that it's not that you don't appreciate it. That's not what I'm saying at all. It's actually that like people who have actually been through the hard stuff and who actually have an understanding of where you're going through, they can give you a lot more insight than someone who's just kind of trying to be sympathetic but has no idea what you're going through. And that's why sometimes the the hardest things in life end up being the most valuable for you. Um, you don't see it when you're in it. That's for sure. You know, whether it's heartbreak or whether it's the loss of a job or whether it's like, you know, a death or, or, or whatever it is. But then you actually do this really beautiful thing where you actually take those really heavy experiences. You learn the lesson from them. And then you actually go out and you just have this kind of understanding that life has ups and downs. And then you see other people that are in the down and you help bring them up. And then when you're in a down, those people bring you back up. And it's just kind of this like really, really, really beautiful reciprocity. And it's so funny. It's like, you'll get people in the clinic that are patients and like, yeah, you might be more evolved in certain areas of your life than they are. But then all of a sudden they teach you so much about like relationships or they teach you so much about like life or these other things. So it's like, there's this kind of give and take, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we do have now the vertical lines to go through. So you want to kick us off with um, our first vertical line that you did mention before. So the Ren and the Do, the conception and the governing, they meet on the midline of the face. And this is like, you know, the, I think it's the Do that comes up here, goes to the tip of the nose and then comes at the filtrum. And then the Ren comes up underneath and goes right there. And they both meet like, what is it underneath? Like at, at, in the mouth? Mm-hmm. One in there. Mm-hmm. So basically these are about doing yin and yang in the world. And then and the Ren and the Du, they come together, the conception and the governing and to make the Chong, which is like your, your chain. Like, you know, it's like, it's this fundamental yin and yang that come together to make the physicality of your body. And this is called the river of life. How are you doing yin and yang in the world? And these lines that show up, they're really important because they show that you have altered your authenticity for others. It's really interesting. And the way I was taught it is this, okay, we have this river of life and there's this flow to the river. And in this river, you have no dependence. It's just you in a canoe with no paddles and you're just flowing down this river and life is taking you in these different directions. And they're the kind of moments, like there's, there's an internal knowing. It's like the internal will. It's not the young will that can force things out and, and make things happen. It's kind of the will that can't be willed as, as Ted Kapchuk puts in his book, the, the web that has no weaver. It's the, it's the inner knowing of the body, the, the roadmap that we're supposed to go that makes no sense sometimes. It's the call of the heart. And in this river, you're in this canoe and it's like, yeah, if you have kids or a dog or a cat or whatever, they're in there for a little bit, but they're really not navigating the road or the river. And then you meet other people that kind of come on the river and it gets really problematic when you stick your arms into the water and you start trying to swim against the current. That's when you get into trouble because there's just this direction that you're supposed to go and there's an innate trust that happens here. So when these lines show up, they're showing that you have altered your way of being for other people. And we are all guilty of it. We all do it. It's only problematic if the line shows up and they can go away. I'll just tell you that right now. So there's five of them. I've kind of decided that there's one for each element. Lillian didn't teach this, but this is just what I've kind of built on the things that she's taught me. The first line shows up in the split of the forehead. And there's a lot more that can be said about the forehead, but I just, I won't go there because for time's sake, but basically when you have the split there, it means that you come from two very different ancestries. And sometimes you don't see this one. You can just feel it. You'll feel a divot. And I have that one actually. And it's funny, like you come from two different ancestries. You come up from two different gene pools that are very, very different. Um, yeah. And it's funny, I have my mom's an immigrant from Mexico and she's very hardworking and she's very business focused and she's just very driven. And then my dad, not that he's not driven, but like he is all American 1960s America, like, you know, apple pie and like, you know, like we do the family thing. <laughs> You know, it's just like watching that 70s show, like Red and Kitty are like my grandparents, if you if you know that reference, but it's hilarious. So it's like a couple of very different ancestries. My dad was very social. He was an athlete. He was just like, a, like he was just Mr. Popular. You know, he just, he could kind of go in everywhere and be very charming. And my mom's just like very like tough and, and to the point. 
So I have this like one side that's like my hardworking, driven, business oriented side. And then I have this other side that's like very athletic and very social and very outgoing. It's very hard to combine those two things. So when you have this split here, it shows that like you're actually having trouble combining those two sides of inheritance. And you actually feel like you have multiple ways of being because the way I was taught is this, we're all like diamonds and we have different facets just like a diamond. And sometimes we really polish one or two of those sides because they give us attention, we get validation, we get recognition, we get something for, for using those sides. And when you have that split there, it's showing that you're really only using one or two sides. And it's not that you're two-faced, that's not what I'm saying at all, but you just have different ways of being in the world. So you might be one way at work and you might be another way with at school or another way with your family, or you might just, you might find that you have different, you're a little bit of a chameleon, and you can be different with different people. And this line saying that actually like you're, you're compromising your authenticity because you're trying to accommodate other people because you might feel very other. And you have to like learn how to take all the sides of you and be this very complicated multifaceted person, which is such a wonderful thing. Any questions on that one? No, again, I just think it's worthy of a nice pause of acknowledgement on the astonishment of all that of it all and i hope people are feeling their foreheads but go ahead yeah, you'll feel you'll feel the split if you're not on if you're just listening um it's like right where the tip of the hairline is on the middle of the face you go right underneath where the hairline is or where it used to be and if you just run your fingers across you'll feel a little, a little divot and if you don't feel the divot great if you do feel the divot okay fine you know you you might have different ways of being and sometimes you get like actually a really rounding right there. And the mm -hmm. way I was taught it, and where it's like a little bit more mysterious. I've seen that, yeah. Yeah, that actually means that like, you know, your ancestries complemented each other quite well. It's not very hard for you. You know, you got, you got both sides that help you kind of be, mom and dad were very similar. Mm -hmm. And the way they raised you actually made it very easy to be, to feel whole in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, have different ways of being. Mm -hmm. And it's funny, one of the things I find if you have that split growing up in school, you might've had all the different friend groups where you kind of traveled from friend group to friend group to friend group. And I laughed because that was so me. Yeah. All these different friend groups because, you know, I had my friends that like, you know, I was kind of nerdy with and I had my friends that like I was social with and then I had my friends I played sports with and, you know, I had different friends for different things. And it was really hard for me to find people that accepted all of me. But I found that once I accepted mm -hmm. myself, and I allowed myself to be this complicated, multifaceted person, and I stopped being that chameleon. The the split's not as intense, which is funny. Um, I, I didn't really think that could change, but I guess it can. Mm -hmm. And that's why I, I still get fascinated sometimes when I learn about this stuff. Mm -hmm. Waiting for someone to disprove me, but it just hasn't happened yet. Um, you, you know, because <laughs> sometimes I'm like, is this real? Is this like, is this stuff true? But yeah, the, the Chinese just knew they had this fundamental knowing of the body. It's amazing yes. what happens when you don't have you know, cell phones and modern conveniences. Yes, yes. So good. So take us on to the next one. The second line is the one between the eyebrows. It's not the 11s. It shows up right in between them. Tom Selleck has a really good one. Hmm. And this one shows that you have used half your liver chi. Mm -hmm. You have repressed your anger. And it's because you're too accommodating. You're too kind. Sometimes it can mean estrangement from father or sons. You have a, you like you, and I actually find this one to be true quite a bit, which is interesting. Not always, but it can be. But basically what it's saying is that you cut yourself off from your yang nature and the liver is like concentrated yang. It's just like, just, it's this really go-getter energy. So when you have that line there, you don't always know how to exert your anger or your aggression or your assertiveness in a way that you feel is not offensive. So you hold it back. One of the positive things about this line is though, it, it's really good for getting promoted. People that have it, they get promoted very easily because they can just hold it all back and deal with it. It's good for your professional life. It's not the best for your personal life because what happens is, is when you're holding on to all that anger, you get a little passive aggressive. People say that you're really easygoing and that you're go with the flow, but underneath there's a little bit of like a, um, an edge to what you're saying. Mm -hmm. this yeah, is good. also the one with the, the overthinking it's people and that's what I thought you were going to say when you were talking about the profession right it's like the people that really get into their stuff and 
and pull their eyebrows in and and that the, one's a little bit different because that oh the, it is you know the worry line I mean sometimes it could cross and when lines oh. they have different meanings okay but this line that I'm talking about starts in between the eyebrows and it just goes up if it comes down into the bridge of the nose because of the spleen stomach pancreas area, the emotion related to that is worry. Oh, so, and the overwork. Okay. Yeah. So it's just, it's a little bit different. The details. Yeah. 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 There's a lot, there's a lot you can see in a little area, but uh, you yeah, know, wow. it'll just confuse you, but just know that if it, if it starts between the eyebrows and then it goes up into the upper forehead or the, the I guess the lower forehead, but up into the forehead. It is a repression of assertiveness. You're this really powerful person and you are not allowing yourself to be that because you're afraid you're going to offend someone. And the way you know that it is there is if you get a little bit abrasive when you drink because, mm -hmm. you know, the alcohol is helping free course the liver chi. Mm -hmm. So it comes out. Or if you find yourself being passive aggressive, it's fine when it's not fine. Mm -hmm. And it's like, the best thing I can tell you is that like, cause that's why there was the, the saying that it's the estrangement of father or the estrangement of sons. There's an estrangement of young. You need mm -hmm. to learn how to be powerful without feeling bad about it. And the funny thing I find with people in this lot with this line, they feel very guilty when they say what they think. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the things I have found is that there's two emotions that don't require any thought. All the other ones, you think a lot about them. Grief, you think about what you lost. Fear, you're worried about what's going to happen. Wor uh, worry is just thinking, you know? But love and anger, you don't think about those ones. If you think about them too much, you ruin them. Mm -hmm. Anger, you think about too much about it, it doesn't come out. Love, mm -hmm. you think too much about it, you crush the butterfly. Everything else you kind of think a lot about, but those two you don't think about. So a lot of the times people with this line, they think too much about how their anger is going to affect other people. So find a healthy way to do your anger. Mm -hmm. Do you? Mm -hmm. I was going to say anger is not a bad thing. Just make sure it's constructive, not destructive. Make sure you fight for, not against, because anger says, hey, you hurt my feelings. That's not okay. And I think we have a, a negative view on anger, but it's actually a very healthy emotion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I tell people to scream in their car and scream into pillows and throw their pet toys at the wall all the time. <laughs> but I was going to ask, I'm curious, because I feel like I've seen this line, but it's been deep. And mm -hmm. maybe what you were saying before is about the lines getting deeper as we age. I feel like I've seen it more common in people that are probably like 60, 65 and older. Would you say that that's true? That there is, is there, let's start there. Is there a subtlety to this line? And then it just kind of gets this deep groove? Yeah, okay. So Lillian named three out of the five lines and I had to create a name for the other two. Okay, this one up top, I call it the great divide. She didn't name that one, but I just thought that was a good one because there's this, these different ways of being, you're, you feel divided. Um, this one in the center, this will answer your question, um, between the eyebrows, it's called the suspended needle, the suspended dagger, or the suspended sword. Mm -hmm. It depends on how short, how long, and how deep it is. A needle's mm -hmm. very thin, mm -hmm. sword is very deep and long, and a dagger short. And Lillian, I think, came up with the dagger because... She was just like, you know, there's there's three different kinds of this line because sometimes they're really deep, sometimes they're long and thin. The deeper and the stronger it is, the more repressed you are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's interesting too, because the liver is the storage house of the body. So it stores blood in Chinese medicine. It stores resources, things like minerals and vitamins. Uh, it stores emotions and... As far as I can remember that it's, you know, it also stores supplements and medications and it can become overburdened with those too. And that kind of filling of the organ is also going to create the constraint that we often talk about with the liver channel. And so it's like that pulling inward that you're talking about that repression, that, that suppression that then 
I'm imagining, you know, as that liver, and we're again, we're talking about, yes, the liver organ, but we're also talking about it in kind of, of a metaphorical way that, um, that then causes that deepening of the line to happen, you know, that, that compression almost of the organ and the liver and kind of deep, like I was talking about with my forehead before dehydrating itself as well, not being able to use its resources or move them properly throughout the body. It's just something that came to mind as the liver. Yeah, you see a lot of liver sheet stagnation and, and people like this with, with this line, if they start to tap into that, like that liver chi, they get all their energy back. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. Evo, the way I was taught it is that you can't look at any one thing individually. Like that's how it's taught because yeah. Lily is wonderful. She taught it in a very Western way where it's like, this means this and that means that, and this means this, but you can't really do it that way because things connect and combine. So it's like, you want to compare, it's like how strong is the liver to start with? Like Tom Selleck, he's got these huge, massive caterpillar eyebrows. And it's like, it's probably okay for him not to be as assertive as he could be because um, he has a really strong liver. And if he was, he'd probably be very scary. You know, he's always like that very kind, very like strong man in like all the things that he plays. But if he didn't have some of that suppression, he might be a little bit um, aggressive. Mm -hmm. But if you have really small eyebrows and you're starting to have all these liver, liver issues, you know, because the eyebrows are the leaves of the tree, they show, they show the health of the liver, then you might, you might need to tap into that a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so what's the next line this one is the human angel marking that's Lillian's name for it it's right on the tip of the nose it's I really like this one I really do um but it can sometimes be a little bit problematic so it shows number one I'll, I'll tell you that the hard stuff first and then, I'll, and then I'll go into the good stuff um the hard thing about it and you can sometimes you don't see it you feel it you feel mm -hmm. yeah, in, feel in a groove right here. And it shows, number one, a fundamental blood deficiency. It's really easy for you to burn blood. It's like, and you get a lot of the weird neurologic glitches that don't really make sense sometimes, like the migraines or the anxiety or the twitches of the body. It's like the, the weird nervous system stuff shows up with that because you're so blood deficient. But the reason it's called the human angel marking is because normally they're people born into families that are quote unquote, dysfunctional and they're kind of the one that comes in and sees all the suffering and it's called that because they're these people that tend to sacrifice their blood for the growth of others they're the ones that are accommodating to other people they work really hard they really easily feel the suffering of the world and they're they're really sensitive people and they're really compassionate and really kind if they allow themselves to be and they don't they don't see too much of that suffering in the world but this line right here shows that you've done too much for others. Like you are you are giving too much of your heart energy because the tip of the nose is the heart, around it is the spleen. But you're giving too much of that blood for other people. You're, you're, you're doing too much for them in a way that's like burning your blood and you get really tired and you get really sensitive. And this line actually is helped by soup for sure. Soup is like the remedy for many things, but... Also being fed by beauty, being giving yourself alone time, giving yourself a sanctuary where you can kind of cocoon and nest yourself up and deal with the world because you see the world as like this very overwhelming place. It's like you, you get so deficient, you get so worried about everything and you want to help make the world a better place, but you have to give it to yourself first. Mm -hmm. I think that's like the theme of our conversation. Yeah, well, I mean that's 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 what these lines are, you know. Yeah, yeah. And these these upper three lines, because it's on the do, Lily never taught this, but this is just kind of what I've come to. And I maybe you can give me some insight on this, but these three are about being young in the world because they're on the do channel. So it's just like this one, you are doing things because uh, on the top, the the great divide image on the forehead, you're doing things in a way in the world where you're not allowing yourself to be all the things that you want to be because you're trying to conform. This one in between the eyebrows is actually showing that you are suppressing your anger and you're not going out in the world. You're not being as assertive as you can be. You're not being as young as you can be. And this one on the tip of the nose, the human angel marking is showing that you are 
doing too much for others um, in the world. Like you're just, you're, you're doing too much for their growth and not enough for your own. Mm -hmm. And going back to what we were talking about before, you know, the nose has to do with the breath and the breath is our first interaction with the world. It's internal, it's external going into internal and internal going to external and uh, the lead that we have going through the fight flight response. And so it's these markings have so much similarity to where they are and where they lay on the face. You know, you were talking about this mark in the middle. It's also about how we see the world and our perception and how, you know, we choose to see those things, how we interact, you know, it's, it's whether we're coming from that soulful place or we're coming from the place of, you know, the quote unquote ego or someone who is less aware of their actions. Um, and then the line on the forehead is so close to the prefrontal cortex and the prefrontal cortex is all about who we want to be, who we see ourselves being, planning, decision-making, you know, oh, wow, being cool. consistent with things. Yeah. So the crossover again, and this is where, you know, before my mind would be blown when I would discover these things. And now I'm just like, oh, this is just Chinese medicine, right? It's like <laughs> Chinese medicine sees so much and takes into consideration, just like you mentioned, the neurological conditioning, um, the, we've talked a lot about the parasympathetic nervous system, the respiratory system, you know, we've mentioned the cardiovascular system with the palpitations. And then of course, you know, the liver and the gallbladder. And just as you were talking to, it was coming to me that this is the end of the governing vessel. So mm -hmm. the governing vessel starts at the bottom of the coccyx and runs all the way up the back of the spine with a point in between every single vertebrae through your lumbar, your thoracic, your cervical vertebrae, and then it goes into the skull and the brain, and then comes up to these points that Travis has been talking about. And being that they're the end of the channel, it also, to me, gives such significance to how we not only perceive the world, but also how we can start that softening within ourselves and to our world because it is how we smell the world how we take in the oxygen around us you know how we see the world you know how we go forward with with the world that's why it's called our forehead because it's what takes us forward um so again there's no mistakes there's only similarities and um I hope, you know, and I, I love the facial reading and I hope that people are starting to understand and see that there's a lot of beauty and healing that we can do by just spending a couple minutes and looking at ourselves and saying, you know, where do I need to soften? What lines do I see more of? And in this conversation, you know, what can I do to support myself in um, transforming them if that's something that, you know, somebody wants to do. Anyways, I digress. So we've got a couple more lines unless there is something else that. You yeah, know, that was, uh, you just reminded me of something. Um, the saying in Chinese is that the physiognomy or like, you know, the, the manifestation of form is a reflection of the heart. Mm -hmm. So that's why like the face is the mirror of the mind. There's that incomplete saying. I think I said it in the last one, like the eyes are the window to the soul, the mm -hmm. face is the mirror of the mind, the tongue is the map of the organs and the pulse beats to the rhythm of the body. Mm -hmm. So it's like whatever shows up on your face, it's showing actually like, you know, how your spirit, how your heart is showing up in the world. And that's why sometimes people, you'll see the photos of them. They look so different and everything. Mm -hmm. They're kind of chameleoning themselves a little bit, which is fine. I think we all do it. But I have to say, it's just like, if you see one of these things that show up on this midline of the face, you're living in a way that is not authentic to yourself and to your own spirit. And so that way you get a little bit of a blockage and that's why they're called blockages on the river of life. 
And I didn't mention this, but essentially what happens is the river is related to the Jing, which is related to the kidneys, which is the ocean of the body. So when these lines show up, it's like you dried out the Jing just because you, you're working too hard to be something that you're not, and it's exhausting. It's exhausting. I think we do that when we're young. And then when you get older, you're not supposed to do that anymore. Yeah. I you feel know? like, you know, you could just end on that note right there. I We've had so many moments of just, all right, let's just pause and let that one sink <laughs> in. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad you're enjoying. Yeah. It's a, you, I've learned a lot from you yeah. too. Yeah, but um, yeah. uh, we'll we'll just end with the last two lines then because these ones start on the um ren mm -hmm. or the conception mm -hmm. this one in the groove it's a vertical one there and lillian didn't name this one but i call this one the altruist line because there is this kind of fundamental it's similar to the human angel marking but it's a little bit more um problematic you know that's, mm -hmm. the, that's the best word i can find but essentially this line on the tip of the nose you're you're sacrificing your blood for others and their growth this line in the groove of the philtrum it's showing that you are thinking that other people's needs are more important than your own and you're being a little bit of a martyr and i, I just have to say if you've been this way forgive yourself you might not know how to live for you you might have been raised this way and it's just so funny my aunt my aunt has this line and one of the things that she told me growing up, because she was born in that like 1950s America, right? God comes first, then others, then you. And that's exactly when these lines show up because the Chinese really didn't actually believe that at all. It's like, yeah, do, do nice things for others, but like your body, your life is meant for you. So if your mom told you growing up that you're not the center of the world, she was wrong because everything that happens to you happens to you in your world. Of course it affects you. And you only have enough of this Jing for you in this lifetime so you can't give it away and when this line shows up in the philtrum it's like you've sacrificed your jing your fundamental essence for someone very specific you've given them everything for their growth at the cost of your own mm -hmm. you'll see it a lot in like um stage moms mm -hmm. a lot, you'll see it a lot in mothers honestly who like did everything mm -hmm. for the kids to mm -hmm. help them grow you see it in teachers you see it in coaches but mm -hmm. you get to this point where it's like you do everything for them, you forget about you, and all of a sudden you think that their life is more important than yours. Mm -hmm. And you're giving away your earth, which is like a big problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we've talked a lot about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like there's a lot more I could say on that, but I know for time's sake, that's that's kind of the gist of it. It's just this line right here in the groove is showing that you've cut into your creativity because that's that whole area, right? That um, That palace of immortality you sacrifice that creative potential that you have for someone else and you've given it too much to them and the way i was taught it is that you're not supposed to carry other people's jing you can't their bodies can't receive it it's mm -hmm. only for you mm -hmm. and if you're doing that like you're kind of making them very you're not setting them up even though your intentions might be good you're not setting them up for a good life and a lot of the time you'll see it you'll see this like very vibrant full of life kind of happy plump child and this like parent who's like a skeleton because they're doing everything for the kid mm -hmm. and unfortunately that kind of teaches the person that things are supposed to be handed to them and that creates other lessons later in life mm -hmm. so it's just like you know there's a balance there's a give and a take and of course parents want to do everything for their kids and of course they want to give their kids everything that they didn't have and i, I don't think there's anything wrong with that but if you do say see this line then you've done too much mm -hmm. that's that simple so like if you don't see it that's fine but if you do see it or if you start to see the other lines that come next to it the over nurturing lines that's a less severe version of it but you're giving away the earth you've given too much for them if it shows up in the groove you've sacrificed your creativity for them and you probably can get really creative about ideas for them but you have no idea what to do with your life or or things that are important for you or you don't even know how to give to yourself what comes to mind is when people say you know, my mom is living vicariously through me or I'm living, vi you know, vicariously through that person sounds very much like what you're describing. You know, I don't like this word because it's a little bit judgmental. Um, yeah. But there's a martyrdom. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's like they, they feel like they have to sacrifice for them because they're not important. Mm -hmm. That's really not what life is about. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a big one, I think. Yeah. And, you know, normally when you're taught the five elements, um, 
sometimes you start with wood. Lillian's lineage started with water, which is mm -hmm. a little bit unusual because the seeds sprouts from the ground and like that's where the gin comes from. And then we're, we're created and we're built and, you know, New Year's in the winter and all those things, right? But this line, the great divide on the forehead, that's water. She didn't teach this, but I kind of just figured it out because if there's five of them, one has to be to each element. And this area is a water area. The one between the eyebrows, that's wood. The one on the tip of the nose, that's metal. That's why a lot of the metal qualities actually help with this one. There's a sensitivity there. The one in the groove, that's earth. Even though this is a very yin area, but like you're giving your jing away, you're giving your earth away, you're giving your physicality away. And the, the area around the mouth, that is earth. The groove is water. And it's almost like you, you dam up the you dam up the river, you dried it out. Mm. The one on the tip of the, the, the cleft of the chin, I actually really like this one. Um, it's fire and it's called fire cutting into water. So it's a good segue into the next one. But if you see the cleft in the chin, sometimes it's hidden. Um, you know, when you're a kid, you're the class clown. You're like, you're the person that like likes attention. But this line in the chin shows that there is a need for validation or recognition. It's actually, you're very charming. You're fun when you drink. You're like, you're very easy to get along with. You light up when people give you a compliment. It's funny, anytime I see that and I give someone like an authentic compliment, I just watch them light up like a Christmas tree. You know, but they like they like to be seen. Um, the, it only becomes problematic when you do things not because you truly want to do them, but because you're doing them because you think you'll get some kind of attention or accolades or recognition. And that's the only time it's problematic. So it's just, you know, I, I used to be more of a pleaser and I have a little bit more of this line. I don't I don't really anymore. I've got, I've got some padding there. But it was funny because like when I was started working with people in the clinic, I'd say, was that good for you? Like, did you like that? Was that good? I was looking for that validation. And it was actually really problematic because I would do everything. I would go over time. I would just do too much for these people because I wanted them to have a good experience. And then I learned from Lily and watch the Shen, watch the spirit, see if you can actually feel the change happen in the body. And once I started feeling that, even if they said they didn't feel better, I knew that I created a change and I stopped looking for that validation. And actually it made me much more successful because I stopped being a pleaser and stopping late because I would, mm -hmm. I would take time. And I stopped doing things because I thought other people wanted me to, or I stopped doing things because I thought I would get attention or whatever it was. And I actually was a lot happier. And if you have this line, great, you're charming. You know, it's a, it's a good, it's a good thing. Just watch for the desire to do things because other people will praise you for it. Mm hmm. Yeah, I see that. You know, that's why it's a fire one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see that a lot in my athletes or even in like younger kids and a, like young adults, especially now with everything that's going on with social media and this outward need. Um, I see more of like a dimpling that has the potential to be that line. Yeah, it's and... called the performer's chin and they mm -hmm. make really good pictures. They make really good speakers. They make really good on uh, social media people or athletes or actors. And whenever I go to the movies, it's funny because I got my AMC pass and I'll, I'll go see the movies and I get shocked because every single actor has something on their chin and it just, <laughs> it makes me laugh because they all have it. It's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. yeah part of the fun of Chinese medicine facial reading is not only, you know, doing it to yourself and turning the mirror on yourself, but it's also, you know, looking at the people that are in your family or that are, you know, at the grocery store. And just like you said, actors and um, actresses, you know, you can learn a lot about what Travis is saying and put it into practicality just by being observant of how people use their face and, you know, spaces that have already been created in their space too. And I agree with you on the elements. I mean, they make sense. Um, so yeah, amazing. Anything else you want to add? Yeah. Yeah. I guess the, the last thing I can say is one of the things that I have realized in my practice now because I have a pain management practice here in Santa Monica. And I came to this realization, you know, my, my biggest goal is not for people to get better. Um, like, you know, that, I mean, that's great. I want them to get better. Obviously I want them to go and be healthy and be pain-free and, and be as healthy as they can be, but that's actually not my greatest goal. My greatest goal is for them to be more authentic. And one of the things that I'm finding is inauthenticity is one of the 
biggest drivers of disease. And it's a little bit more obvious with the body, right? Like we're just like, if you get a physical illness, okay, yeah, like maybe you smoke too much and that's not authentic for the body and you have lung issues now, or maybe like you work too hard and, or you, you pick too many boxes up and like now you're suffering for it. That was an inauthentic way of being physically in your body. But these lines that show up on the midline or the corridor of the face on the ren and the do, they're basically showing that you're living in an inauthentic way from your shen, from your spirit, the most authentic part of you that's actually altering your physical body. And like, there's no switch in your neck that says, oh, here's the mind, here's the body. They all affect each other. So if you have any of these lines, you know, really what it's just saying is you need to be more authentic. You need to, if it's up here on the, um, the great divide, you need to like learn to just be authentically yourself and be this complicated, multifaceted person that has all these different sides and stop trying to only use the sides that get you, you know, some kind of attention. If you have the one in between the eyebrows, you need to authentically express your assertion, your aggression, your anger in a healthy way. It's going to come out really big at first. I'll just tell you that right now. But then once you've done it a couple of times, you realize that actually it's empowering, not disempowering. Just, just be kind, fight for, not against, and be constructive, not destructive. If you have the one on the tip of the nose, the human angel line, you have this really authentic sensitivity that you know like and you want to you care for the growth of others like oh my gosh that's wonderful you know so it's just like you need to really give back to yourself and if you have the one in the groove which is similar but it's a little bit more intense you have this really fundamental ability to nurture and care for others but now you need to learn and give that nurturing and, and care to yourself because your life is important and you need to remember that and you need to have this authenticity about you know remembering that when your cup is full you can pour out of it if you have anything extra to give, great. That's what you can give. If you don't stop giving, you can't pour from an empty cup. And if you have the one on the chin, the performer's chin, you have this authentic desire to be seen, but just don't do it at the expense of being something that you're not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very beautifully said. And thank you so much for sharing with all that with us. I often will tell my patients one of my favorite things about Chinese medicine is that it helps us to get closer to ourselves. And that's such a big statement. And to see the look in their eyes and in their shen and uh, their heart, when I say something like that, it's always different. And to some people at different stages, I'll say this to them and there will be fear. There will be a softening and an understanding. There will be a sigh of relief. There will be an understanding and a knowing. Um, and there's also this love that of appreciation that something out there does that for me. Because so much of, as we know, we do for others, we do external, you know, we do for many reasons other than what's true for us. And Chinese medicine facial reading is just a phenomenal example of how we can see ourselves and love ourselves and, you know, get closer to who we're meant to be. If people wanted to, Travis, are you still doing Zoom or in-person online facial readings? Yeah, absolutely. I do both. Um, and then okay. I also take classes on Zoom. Great. That's um, right. Yep. Yeah, I think I think you're on my email list. So like just oh, yeah, send, me, <laughs> yeah, send me an email and I, I'm happy to work with you and talk to you. And yeah, I think uh, my favorite thing about face readings for people is really just helping them see themselves a little bit more clearly because I think a lot of the times I can't really tell people things they don't know about themselves. Sometimes things come as maybe a little bit of a surprise, but it's not like it's it's really that new. It's a lot of things that are validating them and they yeah. it's like helping them recognize that the things that maybe they think are wrong with them, that's actually not what's wrong with them. That's what's right with yeah. them. They have these yeah. talents, they have these skills, they have these abilities, or they have these ways of being that maybe they're not like other people. But when you know yourself really well, you stop being so other focused you stop projecting, you stop judging, because you just recognize that you're who you are and other people who are, are who they are. Mm -hmm. And you have a lot more compassion for that. And you stop kind of, 
I don't know, just looking at yourself so so harshly. And one of my favorite things about Lillian is like face reading comes from such a judgmental tradition. It's like, this is bad and that's good. And that's the end of the story. And it's just like, people already know what's wrong with them, you know? And I find that when you actually encourage the good and you encourage the good positive traits, because sometimes people get scared, right? Like they don't, oh, what's on my face? I don't know. But it's just actually, it's like when you encourage and you validate them, all of a sudden, you know, you just, you watch them become this really amazing person because they're living in their authenticity. Mm-hmm. The word of the day, I think, authenticity. Yes, yes. Yeah. And I've had several facial readings with you and they've helped me. And I think you do such a eloquent job of articulating, this is what I'm seeing, this is why. And then what we've done throughout this podcast is say, and these are things that you can do to help yourself, you know, if you want to, and everybody's situation is unique and what you're able to see, especially, you know, on zoom. And now I'm sure you're going to be like, don't put any filters on for no, I, I think that's fine actually I, I don't mind at all I, I actually think that's like that's okay and the only thing that I have a little trouble with sometimes is makeup because mm. it can really change things and I'm, I'm a guy I don't really know much about makeup but yeah ultimately like even then like I, I've worked with people that have Botox and facelifts and have tons of makeup or tattooed eyebrows or whatever and you know on zoom it's a little bit harder because in person I can touch and I can feel and I can kind of move things around but yeah it's just like yeah. show, show up as you are and sometimes you know the funny thing is, is that if you're altering your face to look a certain way. I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all, but you know, that's just showing me that's how you're trying to present yourself. Is that who you are? Maybe, maybe not, you know, and that, that's okay, but I might ask why. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love that. Love all the questions that you had to ask when you've done mine. We'll have to do one again really soon. And you're going to be joining us again. We're just going to keep talking about Chinese medicine and facial reading and the five elements. And so I can't wait um, for our next one. So thank you so much, Travis. Was there anything else you wanted to add? I think I think we covered it, but um, I guess the last thing I'll say is that I know it was a lot of info. I know it was a lot to cover, um, but the best thing I can tell you is that if you do have any of these markings, don't worry, it's normal. And just know that it's just, your body's because the body's way of communicating is nonverbal. It doesn't say, Hey, mm-hmm. this is wrong with me, but sometimes you have these clues and these signs and these symbols that show up. So if you have any of these markings, play with them, see what happens. Don't freak out. Don't think that there's anything wrong. There's not, I promise you, but you just might have to find that the way you've been is not supporting the person that you on some levels know you're supposed to become. Yes. Amazing. I love this medicine. Thank you again so much for (laughs) being here. I mean, it does. It just leaves you speechless. I don't know. And I'm still, you know, after 10, 12 years of studying it, I'm just still just, it sits, you know, just when something hits you the right way, we've all had this experience. It just sits really nicely inside of you. So I want to encourage everybody, you know, and I hope that Um, they're feeling this anyway, but to come back and listen to, you know, this episode and other episodes and maybe just fast forward and skip around and, you know, just kind of play with the episodes and find, um, what you're looking for, because it's going to show up. All right, Travis, thank you so much. And, um, we'll see you again soon. Can't wait. Thank you.